Let's um, just begin to center ourselves this morning by, if you'd like to close your eyes or if that doesn't feel good, you can just keep your eyes open with a soft gaze and just begin to feel your breath. Breath, the mindful breath, the rhythm out and in, the wave that washes through our days, creating space for stillness, sorrow, joy, or exaltation, full then empty, ebb and flow. Breath accompanies each step into the unknown. In the breath, the soul finds an opportunity to speak. Images or intuition, poetry or wordless wisdom come and go. No effort but to breathe and listen. Do yoga with no goal but to be in the moment. This breath, this stretch, this wave of emotion rolling in. Watch it crest and break, then dissipate. Hold the body like a lover in a close embrace, listening with intimacy, touching with tenderness. Yoga is a threshold into mystery. Each pose an open doorway and an invitation to unfold. Sensations rise and fall. And through it all, the deathless center radiates the simple truth of union. the ancient scriptures in yoga and many other scriptures of the world speak to the union of ourselves to source, ourselves with God, the universe, the divine, however you connect to that energy. We aren't separate. We are always one. There is no division. And the breath guides us back into this awareness time and time again. The simplicity of our breath becomes quite profound as it leads us into this awareness of source, of God, of the divine, of this union that we are one. There is no separation. So as you continue to feel your breath, Embody a sense of this oneness, this union, this connection with yourself, the divine, this oneness within you. And then I invite you to take this into your practice this morning to just be present with every pose and movement Letting the breath just kind of clear and wash away your day, your week, the month, the season. We're transitioning. We're releasing winter, even though she's trying to hold on. <laughs> but there's a release. There's a movement into this opening of the spring. And as my friend Sue Howell says, opening up to the zhuzh, the zhuzh of spring, the new energy, the openness, the clarity.
Let's invite that in this morning. Uh, and then you can just let your eyes open, bring the light in. And we're going to slowly make our way to our feet. So just take your time. <clears throat> When you arrive onto your feet, let's pick up all 10 toes and spread the toes apart, relaxing the toes on the earth. We've been talking a lot about and connecting in with our feet. This is the foundation of our body. It's the foundation of our health is our feet. So let's bring our hands now up to the center points of the collarbones. Good morning, Mary Carol. And let's bring our fingers just an inch below between these top two ribs. So a little bit more up, Sherry. Yeah, there you go, between these top two ribs. And then we're just gonna begin to tap here, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, feeling that movement, that wave-like nature of our breath, just moving through us with ease. If we're breathing in this moment, we've got another chance. There's hope. We can try again. We can look at things new. We can awaken to new perspective. Ah, let's come to the center of the sternum bone. Tap here. Boost our resilient immune systems, adaptable immune systems. Ah, good. We're going to go south below the breast to the front low ribs. Tap here. And then out to the side seams of the low ribs. It's like we're turning on all the organs, all the systems of the body. We're moving energy, clearing blocked energy. Uh, now let's come up to our cheekbones, lightly tap here, breathe. We're going to tap down the cheeks now toward the jaw. We're going to tap from the jaw. We're going to follow the jaw toward the chin and just tap on the face. Then we're going to go and tap back to the low skull on the back of the head. Go down to the sides of the neck. Going to the upper back. Good. And then just shake off the hands and relax your arms to your sides. Take a moment to feel your feet and feel your breath. And let your eyes open so you're looking out in front of you. We're going to slowly march in place now, tapping our hand to our leg on the same side. And this homolateral pattern, the pattern our brain gets stuck in when we're stuck in a stress or trauma response. So we're going to pause now, brush off the hand, shake them off, and take our opposite hand over to our opposite leg. Crossing over this energy, cross lateral pattern is what this is called. This helps our brain come back into harmony, helps ourselves to heal these old patterns in the body and in the brain. So you can do this quickly, you can do it slow, you can do low knees, you could do high knees. See if you can keep your gaze out in front of you. Good. Now slowly come to a pause. Let your hands rest in front of your hips. Feel your feet anchoring down into the mat. Slight bend in the knees. Good. Ah, just feeling weighted in your feet and your legs, helping to just ground your nervous system, calm it, come into presence. And 
Now on your next inhalation, you're going to slowly draw your hands up the center of your body through the face and then exhale your hands out and around your body into your energy field. Continue to move with your breath as we wash the windows of our energy field. Good. Now place one finger into your navel, one finger between your eyebrows. Press in and pull up on both of these points. Take three more breaths. Bless you. Good. And then release the hands, step out, shake out the body, kick out the legs. Shake, shake, shake. Even let the head just slightly shake, releasing tension. Good. Now let's um, take our feet hip distance apart here. Again, that slight bend in the knees. We're going to twist at the waist, but keep our hips um, neutral and level. We're just going to begin to turn at the waist as we wake up our spine this morning. Someone told me they had a sleepy back or something this morning, so we'll help wake up the back a little bit here. The arms are really loose, like Gumby arms. Let the joints be really soft. You can let your head go with you side to side if that feels dizzying at all. Keep your gaze just out in front of you straight ahead. <sighs> Now we'll pick up our opposite heel to kind of help move us. The hips will come with us now. Like we're wringing out a dirty washcloth, but our spine, we're wringing out tension here. Ah. Let your gaze come out in front of you again as we begin to slow down now, not abruptly, but just kind of naturally. Eventually, you'll find stillness in your body as you take a breath. Um. Good. And let's step our feet together now. We're going to bring our left hand to our left hip, and the right arm is going to extend straight up. It's also going to move back toward the back plane of your body, any amount. And I just invite you to really focus here on the right shoulder blade, the inside seam of the shoulder blade. We're just going to move the shoulder blade in toward the spine. So that's going to take our arm back. And then we'll extend straight up, take a couple breaths. And then we'll begin the side bend toward the left. So your hips will move toward your right. Really anchor down through your feet like you're pressing into the earth. Your bones are pressing away. The tissues of your legs are toning. Good, and then release. That arm relax down. Second side, right hand to the right hip. The left arm, it goes up first. Now place awareness on the left shoulder blade and move the shoulder blade in toward your spine, taking the arm back and then stretch up again toward the ceiling. Breathe. And then take your arm over your head toward the right, any amount, and let your hips move toward the left as you anchor through your feet. Good, and then release that arm down. We're gonna go back to the first side. Right arm goes straight up, 
Inside of the right shoulder blade moves in toward your thoracic spine and your upper back, and it takes your arm back. And then extend up through your fingers. Simultaneously root your feet. Good. Now, as you side bend toward your left, you're going to hug the left belly, low back tissues in toward your spine. So the left side's toned, the right side is opening. Good, breathe. Now see if your chest can slowly turn up toward the right arm any amount. Beautiful, and then let the arms slowly release down. Good, right hand on the hip now. Left arm goes up, move the left shoulder blade in toward the spine, take your arm back. As you side bend toward your right, tone the right belly into your right low back, tone the tissues there and open in the left side. Side bending toward your right. Then turn your chest any amount up toward your left arm. Breathe. Good, and then slowly release your arm down and notice if your shoulders have moved back any amount. Wow, wow, man, it's such potent medicine, good work. All right, so we're gonna be working a lot with that movement this morning. Um, but we're going to pause and kind of focus on our legs um, and kind of drawing some tone into the legs. So you're going to step into a wide stance. So you might want to turn toward the long edge of your mat so you can see me stepping into a wide stance. And then you're going to pivot your right foot out to a 90 degree angle. So when you look down at your feet, your right heel, it's bisecting your left foot in half. That's where we want the right heel to be positioned. And you wanna take a wide enough stance that A, you feel stable. B, when you bend your right knee, you've got some space to open here in your hips and in the inner, the adductors here. Okay, so we've got our feet. We wanna pick up our 10 toes, spread the toes, activate the feet, and then lower the toes back down. Good, so we're gonna start here with hands on the heart. We're gonna feel the shoulders move back again. The shoulder blades move in toward the spine on the upper back. And now we're gonna position the shoulder blades moving down our back down toward the backs of the hips, good. So let's bend our right knee and let it just stack above the right ankle here. Feel rooted in the feet. Good, we're going to inhale, press down through the mound of our right big toe. Pressing down, we're going to slowly straighten the right leg, pulling tissue up the leg to the hip. Do this again, we'll inhale, we'll bend the right knee. Good, exhale, straightening the leg. Good, now as you bend your right knee, pause here. Go down to your foot and with the tissue of your foot, it's like you're making a fan with the tissue. So simply you're pressing your right foot down and you're isometrically toning out to the pinky edge of your foot. Why do we care about that? because now your knee has aligned even more toward the toes and it's not caving in. So it's toning the knee, those of you with knee things. Okay, let's continue pressing down through the ball of the foot. We're straightening the leg and then we're bending the knee as we're continuing with that outer rotation of the foot. Now we're not talking about moving the foot, the ankle, we're just toning the tissues to the outer foot. 
Good. Let's do it one more time. Straightening the leg. Are you present? Are you like, I'm focusing on groceries right now? No judgment. Just come back to your foot. This is your foot. It's not mine. You're going to live with it longer than me. Let's have healthy feet. Here's my passionate yoga teacher coming out. So let's just stay here, be present, notice, and breathe. And then we'll, we'll bend the knee again. Here's warrior two. The arms are going to stretch out now like wings, kind of like we're on surfboards if you've ever surfed. Shoulder blades draw in, down the back, lifting your beautiful heart and lungs so you can breathe even better. Gaze over your right fingers. Hmm. Feel the wave of your breath. Good. Slowly straighten the front leg and relax your arms. Turn your right foot in. Turn the left foot out. Second side, before we go anywhere, pick up all 10 toes, spread the toes apart, and then relax them back on your mat. That left foot is pressing down and it's fanning out to the left. So the whole foot is rooting down. Then when your hands come to your heart, you'll bend your left knee, rooting through the back foot, and then inhale, slowly straightening the front leg. So we're going deeper, we're getting more refined. We're not just moving the leg and the knee haphazardly. As we press down through the mound of the left big toe, we're drawing tone up the legs all the way to our left hip. And then we'll slowly bend the knee. So each movement is this dance of tone and opening with your breath. Now we'll bend the front knee and we'll stay here. We'll let the arms spread out, shoulder blades draw in and down your upper back and the arms extend out. The fingers are resting like if you were in a pool of water, they're just resting on top of the water, gazing over the left hand. Good, really good. Let's take a couple more breaths here. Feel the pose. And relax your arms. Straighten your leg. Turn your foot in. Turn your right foot out. We're going to the first side again. So we're gonna add a little bit of other pieces to this puzzle here. Mm -hmm. Spread the toes, root the feet. Front foot is in that outer spiral, outer turn, the fan. Then we'll bend the right knee. And as we do that, can you stay rooted in your back foot or did the foot come up with you when you bent your knee? You just feel into this. Good, now we'll bring our arms out, warrior two. Breathe. On your next inhale, your left hand will come to rest on the back left thigh. The right arm, it spins up and you'll reach straight up toward the sky behind you any amount. This is reverse warrior. Tone the left side of your belly and lower back in toward the spine. As you open in this right rib cage, down into your obliques. Good, and then come back to warrior two. Take a breath. 
side angle pose. Your front arm, right arm rests on the front thigh. The left arm is going to straighten straight up toward the sky. You can also continue it over your head into that deeper side bend. Beautiful. Good, now we'll come back up into warrior two. Breathe. Reverse warrior, left hand to back thigh, right hand spins up and reaches back, toning the left lumbar spine all the way to the front left belly. Good, then we'll come back into warrior two, take a breath. Side angle pose, arm reaches straight up or over the head toward the earth. Good, come on up, warrior two, take a breath. Relax the arm, straighten the leg, turn the right foot in. <laughs> good that's actually a good idea I like that Mary Carol so we're just going to bend our knees a little bit and let our hands either come to the floor or grab your blocks and place your blocks underneath your hands we're just going to stretch our spine out straightening the arms straightening your spine your legs can straighten as much as it feels okay for you So as we come into these forward bends, the big toe mounds of your foot, they're pressing down. You're toning up the legs so the kneecaps lift, the legs are straightening, the thigh bones move back. And creating more space in your sciatic nerve, hips, lower back, hamstrings. Then when you're ready, you can walk your hands back in toward the body, bend the knees, take your hands on your hips, let your heart lead the way as you slowly rise back up. Good, now we'll turn our left foot out to a 90 degree angle. Pick up the toes, spread the toes, lengthen them back on the mat. The front foot is pressing down, it's spiraling out that outer tone of the left foot. Then you can bend your left knee above the ankle, keep rooted in the back foot and like let the arms stretch out from your heart. Shoulder blades draw in and down the back. Beautiful. Warrior two, take a breath. See if your back leg can straighten a little bit more. Nice, good. Now right hand comes to right thigh, left arm spins, good. And then reach up for the heavens and then behind you any amount, toning now the right side of the belly to your right low back. Breathe, bend your left knee a little deeper, Sherry, if that feels okay for you, good. Good, warrior two, take a breath. Side angle pose now, left forearm to left thigh. Right arm goes straight up toward the sky. Any amount, maybe it wants to travel over the head in the deeper side bend. Remember, we're not doing any goals here. We're breathing, we're in the moment, we're honoring our bodies, what feels supportive, what feels right. How do we need to modify if something isn't feeling aligned? Good, let's come back up. Warrior two, take a breath. Reverse warrior, 
Right hand comes to the back of the right thigh. You got it. Left arm reaches up, maybe behind you, but you're taking that tissue tone now in the right belly, low back. Good, and now come back into warrior two. Take a breath, breathe. Laurel, bend your left knee toward your second toe. Yeah, good, side angle pose. You're all doing great. Breathe, we're almost there. Good, come on up, take a breath, warrior two. Slowly straighten the front leg with kindness to your knee. Turn your foot in, step your feet together into mountain pose. Stay in mountain pose or shake it off. Shake out the legs. That was a lot of work in the quads. Good work. <clears throat> All right. Let's grab our block. We just need one block. I'm gonna turn the fan up in the room a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm gonna crack a little window over here. So grab your block, find mountain pose in your feet. We must be releasing a lot of toxins. That's what's happening. We're all just heating up. All right, so with your block here, we're gonna be passing the block. We've done this a few times, focusing on the two movements that we're focusing on in this uh, movement is internal rotation of the shoulder and external rotation of the shoulder. So we go to the shoulder and we turn the shoulder in, the hand is facing back. We call these low V arms. And then we've got external rotation. The shoulder moves back, the hand moves up. So those are the two movements. These movements are critical for this movement in the shoulder joint, as well as the movement in the shoulder blade. Why do we care about that? Because we want to be able to move our shoulders freely, right? Grab that thing on the top of the cupboard, right? We can never reach. Yes, we can get it now. All right. So let's take the block in the left hand here. And we're going to take the arm out to the side, externally rotate from the shoulder. We turn out and then we're slowly bringing the left arm up. The right arm comes out, externally rotate and then bring the arm up overhead. We're passing the blocks. Now the blocks in the right hand. We're lowering the arms down. Internally rotate the shoulders, the hands turn back. We pass the block behind the buttocks and then we come back up. We externally rotate the arms as we slowly bring the arms overhead. So you can go at your own pace here. Are you breathing? <laughs> Can you feel your feet on the earth? The shoulders come up, shoulder height, externally rotating them. Feel how that helps your shoulder blades move in and down the back. Opening here, your chest, front of your shoulders, your lungs, your physical heart, your energetic heart space the ability to feel self-compassion and self-love, the ability to open, to receive, and to give love to others. Good, when you come down behind you, we're going to switch directions. So we'll just go right back up, externally rotate, slowly drawing the arms up. Now you can also make this a core exercise, kind of like we, everything has to engage. The legs are engaged, navel to spine. 
So it's like, how can we stay rooted in the bottom half of the body as we're opening our tree branches up here? Oh, take a break when you need to. Let's do it one more time if you got it in you. And if not, no worries. And then let's relax. You can set your block down. And then let's take each arm, the Gumby arms, really loose in all of the joints and shake out each shoulder, each arm, elbow, wrist, hand. You can kind of feel that shake out into the shoulder blade. Good. Now we're going to hug ourselves. <laughs> And we're going to place our fingers right in between the shoulder blades now. Now, if you say, I can't really reach them, then just do one arm, help, you know, help your other arm to reach back and do one at a time. So you're going on the inside of your shoulder blades and just pressing in, moving down. So you just clear. Oh, I got some knots back here. How about you? <laughs> Just breathing into those knotty areas. Good, and then release. Oh, and just shake it out. All right, good work. We're gonna work with tree pose now. If you'd like to use one of the beams in the room um, or a wall, you've got a wall behind you or a chair. <clears throat> so we'll begin our tree. Let's bring it in on the left side of the body. So if you're using a support, it'll be on your left side. <clears throat> so the same thing applies when we're in these standing poses to when we're working with balance as we go to the feet. We widen and broaden the base of our foundation of our feet, and we grow these roots from the four corners of our feet into the earth so that we feel connected, we feel solid, we feel stable. From there, we tone our inner, our arches, the center of the feet, they lift, and we continue that lift of tone up the legs, the kneecaps, the thighs all toning, the belly's toned, the chest is lifting, the shoulders are back and our beautiful head is aligned right over our spine. So from here, this is mountain pose. Mountain pose is the beginning of all other poses. This is where you should start with yoga is learning how to stand in mountain pose. So you say, well, we're not doing anything, we're just standing. But if you just followed the cues and you apply tone and lift, then you all who say, I need to improve my posture, get to already embody that. This is what you're going to work with. Uh, open hearts. I often joke, walk like this around in brolems, you know, like while you're waiting in line, practice tree pose, practice, practice mountain pose. I'll bring that in again. All right, so here we are. We're gonna take mountain pose into tree pose. This is a balancing pose on the left side. Hands come to the heart or your left hand can be on your support. If you have a support you're using, make sure you're not leaning into it. Really focus weight down through the left leg and foot. Let your gaze be out in front of you so you can see what's coming. See the light here. And then open up your right hip, kickstand your toes. Option one is you bring the right foot into the inner left ankle. In fact, if you're using a support, this is where you're going to be. Option two is you slide that right foot to your inner left shin bone and the two become one, they're married together. Breathe. Option three, the right foot can come to the left inner thigh, but make sure you're not on the side of your knee joint. 
So go lower, Sherry. Yeah, good. Really activate foot to inner shin. Gaze out in front of you. Find something to gaze your beautiful eyes upon and breathe. Maybe a smile lights up your lips as you fall out of balance from the wind in your tree. Maybe your arms would like to come into that external rotation out to your sides. Maybe those arms continue extending up and back. Good, and then come on out when you're ready. Shake out your roots and your trunk. Second side, widen the base of the right foot. Get really solid there. Draw the tissue tone up the leg. It's like you've put on your stockings. <laughs> Who hasn't worn wool tights almost every day? <laughs> it's like putting those on, okay? All right, here we go. Find what you're focusing on out in front of you with your gaze. Open up your left hip, draw the foot to your inner right ankle bone, hug the two together, breathe. This is where you're going to be. Your left toes are still on the floor. If you have a support, I want you to explore starting here. Left toes are still on the floor, but you're hugging that ankle, left ankle to the right shin bone. And then, you know, if you know you can go to these other locations, then move there with awareness. So we feel really strong in the lower half of the body. Let's become light and open in the upper body. Shoulders draw back. Maybe the arms extend out in that external rotation. Maybe they want to go and play up overhead. Come on out when you're ready. Shake out your roots and your trunk. Good. All right. We're going to make our way down to the mat, onto our belly. <clears throat> if you'd like a little extra padding under your front pelvis, place your blanket in the center of your mat. And then go ahead and just make your way down. When you arrive, stack your hands, rest your forehead there. Stretch your legs long behind you and then relax your legs and let your hips rock side to side. And then pause in stillness. Noticing the wave-like nature of your breath that comes in to just wash through you. Okay, so you're going to pick up your left leg now, just a couple inches off the mat, point your toes and reach your leg long, and then place the tops of your toenails down on the mat. And then the right leg, same thing, lift, extend through your toes, place the tops of your toenails on the mat, the very top. So you 
So the heels are lifted. Okay, so let's take let's take our arms to our sides now. Turn the palms facing the body and your forehead is resting on the mat. Feel your shoulders as they move away from the mat and feel the inside seam of your shoulder blades move in toward your spine and your upper back. Notice how that broadens the collarbones on the front of your chest. Now we're going to turn our palms so they're facing up toward the ceiling as we spread the hands with tone. And then we're going to slowly press the hands and arms up toward the ceiling as we float our chest and our head slowly off the mat through the pressing down of the feet. So go to the feet and the legs, tone the legs, strong legs, and then let the spine just kind of hover off the earth here. The arms are continuing to press up toward the ceiling any amount. We're in internal rotation in the shoulders. We've got these low V arms and we're pressing them up toward the ceiling. Reach long out the top of your head, gaze down on the earth. Nice, take a breath and then relax. Rest your hands. Relax your body, rest your forehead on the hands. Rock your hips side to side. This is a way we release tension in the back, as well as a way we reset our nervous system. And then pause and just relax in stillness. If you're looking for a healthier, stronger, happier back, we have to go to the feet and the legs and we have to tone and strengthen there to strengthen the spine. So go to the tops of your toenails. They're pressing down into the mat. As you draw tone up your legs, your kneecaps actually lift off the mat. The quadriceps tone, the buttocks, even the low belly. And so again, we'll take our arms, our shoulders up toward the ceiling, palms facing the ceiling. And we'll let our heart and our face come off of the mat as we tone the back body, breathing into the spine. Some of you may even decide, I'm going to explore arms are going to straighten out in front of me like I'm super a woman flying around, <laughs> palms facing down. And then when you feel complete, you'll rest your forehead and you'll relax all that muscle tone and just let go in the tissues. Take your hips side to side. And then relax. <clears throat> We're going to play in half locust pose or swimmer's pose now. And so your right arm is going to extend out in front of you on the floor, palm is down. Your left arm is going to reach back. So to do this kindly to your left shoulder, internally rotate your left shoulder. It turns in, the palm turns up toward your ceiling. And then let the back of the hand rest on your lower back. 
If that's not available, just let the arm rest by your side. Okay, so just find your way there with breath. Good. Now we're going to press down through the top of the right foot and lift our left leg and left toes off the mat, just a few inches, pointing that left foot, toning the whole left leg. And then the right arm is gonna slowly reach up toward the ceiling any amount, moving the right shoulder blade in toward your spine. Breathe. You can lift your chest and head off the mat as well, if that's available. And then slowly lower down. Keep your left hand, if it is on your lower back, give your lower back a nice circle massage. And now we're going to switch. The left arm goes out on the floor. The right shoulder internally rotates as we bend the elbow and place the back of the right hand on the lower back. Your right leg is going to lift off the mat, tone the tissues of the leg, point out your right toes, and then let your head, heart, and spine come off of the mat as you lift the left arm any amount straight up toward the ceiling, feeling that inside edge of your left shoulder blade as it moves toward your thoracic spine. And lower down, rest your forehead, circle that massage on your lower back. Good, now stack your hands, rest the forehead on your hands, relax completely. Rock your hips. Relax. Good. Now place your hands on the mat under your shoulders so you can slowly press yourself back up to all fours. And separate your knees apart to a comfortable width for your knees. Coming again on the tops of the toes, draw the big toes together. Now we're going to lift the chest, lift the tailbone, come into cow shape here in the spine. Breathe. Keep cow shape as you slowly extend your hips back toward your feet into child's pose. Your arms can extend out. Your head can rest on the mat or on a block or on your hands. And then slowly rise back up. We're going to transition onto our backs. Place your blanket at the end of the mat if you'd like that head support. And have a block nearby you.
<laughs> Grab a drink of water if you need one. How are we doing? Everybody's still with me here? Still with yourself? Thumbs up online? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so good that we do this together, right? Okay, let's um let's bend our knees and place our feet on the mat hip distance apart. <clears throat> All this beautiful work you've just done in your upper back and your shoulders. We want to continue that imprint um, here on our back. So our left shoulder is going to tuck under. And so we literally are moving the left shoulder blade in toward the spine and we're resting on the back of our left upper arm. And then we do the same thing on the right side. We tuck, we're tucking the right shoulder blade in and under. And now we've got this prop for the beautiful altar of our own heart where all the love we will ever need lives within here. This is the source of all that love. And as we walk our feet in toward the buttocks now, we're going to press our hands down into the mat, tuck the tailbone under and lift the hips off the earth into bridge pose. We've got pressure down through the feet, hands, backs of your shoulders and back of your head. Breathing here, extending out your knees. And on your next exhale, you can relax your hips back to the mat. Good, now you're going to take your block, lift your hips up, set your block now horizontally underneath the back of your hips. This is rest, your sacrum will rest on the block. Most of you will do that lower level. Some of you may feel that the second level is available. So you just have to feel that out for your uh, front of your hips and your lower back. And then just let your hips rest on the block. Supported bridge pose here. So the right heel is going to drag down the mat so that the right leg is going to straighten. Your right heel is pressing down. Your toes are popping up like flowers that we will eventually see <laughs> toward the sun. Good. Now you can stay here and just really extend out that right leg as you open up this front right hip down to your quadricep. If it feels available, you can also drag the left heel down the mat, straightening the left leg, really root through the heels and you still have some tissue tone up the legs to your hips so that your sacrum stays steady on the back side here. Supported wheel pose. We have a, a great counterbalance to all the flexion we were doing in our standing poses. A few more breaths here.
And then you're going to drag your right heel back in and then the left heel. So the knees are bent, feet on the mat, pause and breathe. Your right leg is now going to slowly straighten up toward the sky. So the right leg straightens, foot is up toward the ceiling. Good, now you're going to slowly rotate your right leg out, and then you're going to slowly bend your knee and place your right ankle onto your left thigh for figure four. You can place your hands on your thighs, left hand on the left thigh, right hand on your right thigh, guiding your right knee away from the body and pressing both thigh bones back and then slightly up. Good. Then you can straighten the right leg, take a breath as you press the foot up toward the ceiling, and then bend your knee and place the foot on the mat. Left leg extends, it straightens up toward the ceiling. You're rotating the leg out to the left first, and then slowly bend your knee, taking the knee away from the body and the left ankle onto the right leg. Your hands will rest on your thighs, pressing into them so they're moving away from you, and then slightly up in the tissue here. And straighten your left leg up toward the sky. Take a breath, press up through your left foot. And then bend your knee, place the foot on the mat. Lift your hips up, remove your block. Let your hips relax down. And now straighten your right leg on the mat and draw your left knee in toward the chest. Take three breaths here. Hands supporting your left knee. Your left arm will go out onto the floor as your right hand supports your left knee. And now guide your knee over the body to the right as we come into this low spine twist and outer hip stretch. Keep the left shoulder blade anchored on the mat. Maybe your neck would like to turn slowly to your left. And return your head and your knee back to center. Stretch your left leg slowly onto the mat. And now bend your right knee in toward your chest. Wrap one or both hands around the knee for three belly breaths. Following the rhythm of you, your breath the in and the out, the ebb and the flow. We're mostly made of water. Hey, your right arm goes out onto the floor, support your right knee with your left hand, and then guide your knee over the center of your body toward the left, toward the floor. Keep your right shoulder blade on the mat. It kind of wants to pop up when you come into the twist. 
And then option here to slowly turn your head to the right. And then come back to center and stretch your leg out as we transition into Shavasana. Final resting pose, placing perhaps a bolster under the knees for lower back support. Something under or over your eyes, perhaps. And if you're in the room and you'd like an eye pillow, raise your hand and I'll grab you one. Letting your body come into full rest here. Allowing your practice to just settle deep into all of your cells and all of your bones, tissues, organs, into all the layers of you mentally, emotionally, spiritually. When you feel overwhelmed, go to the breath. Return home there.
in your own time and in your own way. Begin to slowly reawaken your body. Eventually making your way onto your side and into fetal pose, resting your head. Gathering yourself back up taking a comfortable seat. I invite you to place your hands in prayer pose at the heart. Let's close our practice chanting the sound of one ohm as we send this healing sound out to our community, our families, our world today. Let's take a deep breath in together. Namaste. Namaste.